Chicago, 2009. 24 years old. I'd recently graduated from film school with a minor in fine art. We were in a recession, and I opted to try my luck at getting work on any film set I could in the art department for low to no money. Life was crazy, fun, unpredictable, and stressful, as well as stress-free at times. I had just finished up working on a movie when I began to feel a sharp pain in my abdomen. Not taking it seriously, I continued on with the week. The pain began to get worse though, but I didn't want to admit this reality to myself. I had just gotten work on a new project and I wanted to pretend like the searing pain in my abdomen was nothing to worry about. So I buried my thoughts and I focused on this new project and continued on with the week. Soon, I was becoming aware of the faintness I was feeling and decided I should take some time to relax, drink more water, maybe go for a walk. So the next day I did. Nothing like a leisurely walk down Lakeshore Drive with my friends except we were at least a mile away from where we parked our car and it came so fast. I felt a sickening rush of pain in my side and collapsed. I remember my friends running to grab the car but remember very little after that until I awoke in a hospital bed with drainage tubes blooming from my abdomen. My surgeon, explaining the work he had just completed, said, Well, I have never seen a worse case of appendicitis as yours. It was like removing concrete. He continued in almost an amused fashion about how completely baffled he was that first I survived, and second, that I so bravely and well more importantly, how idiotically, irresponsibly, and stubbornly I ignored the pain. Yeah, he pretty much hit the nail on the head with that one. <laughs> He said that he made several incisions to clean up my abdomen. He needed to let me know that the kind of surgery I'd had would most likely result in something called ghost pains in my abdomen from the scar tissue for years to come. It could be mild or possibly even no pain. Yet many have complained that sometimes the pain could feel similar to an appendicitis. Yay, I thought. I ended up having to stay in the hospital and watch for a while to make sure I didn't get an infection. I would like to say that was the end of that, but of course, I got a really bad infection and, well, um, perhaps that's a story for another time. <laughs> Anyways, I'm still here. Now let's fast forward 10 years. California, 2019. I'm 26 weeks pregnant, teaching art, and responsible is my middle name now. Martin and I had just spent some of our credit card miles to splurge on something called a baby moon, or rather, last vacation before the arrival of our babe. I was feeling great all throughout my second trimester, and I was finally able to feel Ava and her active kicking. At the end of the week, we had a long Easter weekend planned, and Martin and I were excited to road trip to visit my parents' new house who had moved to a neighboring state to be closer to my brother and me, and well, of course, the new baby. That Monday, I was in the middle of teaching one of my classes when I was struck with severe stabbing abdominal pain in my lower right-hand side again. Oh no, Ava, I thought. I called our school nurse, who heroically dropped everything, drove me to my doctor, and even helped me change into a hospital gown. They did an ultrasound, and the first thing they told me was that Ava was extremely healthy, and her vitals were perfect. I was thrilled. They still sent me to the hospital afterward for observation where a surgeon checked both Ava and my vitals again and reassured me that yes, Ava was very healthy and so was I. After informing the surgeon of my appendectomy, she commented that she believed my pain had something to do with something called adhesions, which are sort of like rubber band, string-like scar tissue that form internally at the incision sites. She thought that perhaps what was happening was that those adhesions from my appendectomy scar were stretching as Ava grew. Grateful that the pain had nothing to do with Ava's health, yet very tender and sore, I had to take a few days off work to recuperate from the residual pain. I felt like I needed this vacation more than ever now. I only had one more day of work. Thursday at work, I felt great. I got home, poured myself a glass of lemonade, and headed to the backyard to turn the sprinkler on, elevate my barking dogs, and rest. But as I sat down, I was instantly overcome by the stabbing pain again, rendering me frozen. I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to panic because I knew it had something to do with the adhesions. I waited for the pain to leave so I could get up and turn the sprinkler off that was intermittently spraying me, but I just couldn't move. The pain then intensified and I knew I had to call Martin. He was at work, which was about an hour and a half away from me. He got in the car and told me we had to go to the doctor immediately. My brother ended up driving me to the hospital where Martin somehow got through LA rush hour traffic and made it just minutes after we arrived. That night I had another ultrasound where they believed they saw some internal bleeding. Martin and I went pale. They checked me into the hospital where we had to figure out what the next steps would be. Hooked up on monitors all weekend, 
They figured out that they no longer thought that the ultrasound was correct, but could not figure out where the pain was coming from. I tried to explain to them about my previous surgery, but they weren't sure. I would have to wait a few more days to see if the specialist could come check on me. So we were stuck in that room where Martin only left my side to go pick up my belongings from home. Other than that, he slept on that couch. Every day I had many extreme episodes of pain where they would want to monitor the whole event, which was not very comfortable. Finally, the specialist doctor arrived just in time for another episode of pain, where she was able to see how Ava was doing and what was going on inside of me. After the episode of pain, I explained to her the severity of my appendectomy, the suspicions of the previous surgeon from the week prior, and she reviewed all the tests and data. She agreed that she thought they were adhesions as well. I ended up having to go on disability from work due to the extreme pain, but about a month before Ava was due, I woke up in the middle of the night to some of the worst pain I've ever felt in my life, and then sudden relief. Not really sure what happened, to be honest. Perhaps the adhesion snapped? I don't know. But after that, I started to feel back to normal, and I was ready for Ava to be born. One year later, and Ava is here, and she is everything. We have a long Easter weekend planned to visit my parents' house, which at this point is not so new anymore, but we still haven't visited yet. But you guessed it, canceled due to the pandemic. Just like so many families during this time, we all gathered around the table to share meals with both Martin's family and my family on Zoom. During this Easter though, I took a photo of Ava in one of her outfits she had gotten from grandma and I instantly saw it as a painting. I knew it was finally time for me to break out my canvases and paintbrushes again. When coming up with any painting idea, I first bring the photograph or reference photo into Photoshop where I can start to place the images in a composition that makes sense to me. I may zoom in on an image only focusing on the face, or I may add many elements to create a deeper meaning within an art piece. In this specific instance, I knew I wanted to experiment a little with my painting style, where normally I painstakingly try to make every detail look so realistic. Nowadays though, I'm more inspired to experiment with the feeling of a piece and I'm ready to experiment with a more abstract style. So once I added Ava's photo to Photoshop, I started to add in blocks of color. One in particular was inspired by the Ibiza walking tour that showed these vibrant bright lemon yellow doors that I just fell in love with. I thought that the vibrancy of the color matched Ava's personality. I decided that I wanted to create a gamut of colors based off of this lemon yellow and found a magenta and teal to complement the yellow. I knew that these colors would eventually be integrated into my paint mixture of flesh tones as well, so I had to adjust the vibrancy and saturation of Ava's photo in Photoshop. Once I like how my image has started, then I need to make a quick outline transfer to my canvas. Some people use the grid method. I sometimes use transfer paper, the grid method, and for larger pieces I can use a projector to do my outlines. Once the outline has been added to the canvas, then I use a charcoal pencil to create value within the piece. I will start shading in my midtones and shadows, leaving the highlights just blank. Once the sketch is complete, I do a wash of Gamsol with a paintbrush where I seal the charcoal drawing onto the canvas with just a light mixture of paint. Eventually, this will help me when figuring out which colors and values I will need later on. Next time on Portrait of an Artist Mom, I will continue my oil painting of Ava and show you the next step of the process. And I will realize that I have very little time to win a stupid bet that I made months before the lockdown. If you like these videos, please subscribe, like, and support us on our Patreon page, Portrait of an Artist Mom. Welcome to the family.